Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2025 and as always the case, On One did a great job putting out a really solid update. And what I wanna do is talk at a high level about some of the new stuff that's coming and demo a few of the features that I think I'll be using the most. Now this edition of On One Photo Raw has incorporated generative AI. So there's generative erase to get rid of unwanted things in your photo. And there's generative crop, which allows you to recompose and stretch the canvas in situations when you need to do that. Super useful and super helpful. They've also got uh, an automatic dust spot removal slash reduction tool. And the same thing for power line reduction or removal, which allow you to get rid of unwanted things with just a click. It's super powerful, super useful, and I know I'll be using those quite a bit in my photos. Now they've got other things like photo stacking, target albums, and a new canvas dialog but there's three new features and new tools that I know I'll be using quite a bit that I'm really excited about. First one is depth mask, which I'm gonna show you in this video. Second one is the new edit color filter. I absolutely love that. And the third one is the match color filter, also something I think I'll be using quite a bit. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now I've got this photo here. This is just a shot of Vancouver, Canada, absolutely lovely city. Uh, and I've done a few things to it before and after or current state which is basically just some brilliance AI, a couple of minor adjustments and develop. And I'm ready to move on and show you some of these new things because they're fun and they're cool. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is edit color. So I'm gonna go into effects and add filter. And the thing I wanna do is grab this one, edit color. And as you can see, as it says in the description, precisely target and edit a color range. This is really powerful stuff that gives you amazing control over color. It's way beyond just HSL which is global in nature, you can really refine these selections. I'll give you an example of how it works. You start by using this little eyedropper. So you click that to activate it. And let's say I'm gonna grab this blue in the sky. Once I do that, it's identified this color range as you see over here. Now you can click this little eyeglass icon. And what that will do is essentially make the rest of the photo black and white. And just the color range that you've selected will be still represented in, in its original color. So that's really powerful and useful. And I love that because now I can see, okay, this is where the blues are. And as you can see here, you can expand that range. You can take this blue to go further into the kind of the magentas. And you can do the same thing on this side. You can take that. Now you can only take them a certain range, uh, but you can also reduce the saturation by doing that uh, with this slider here. You can see how that's impacted this photo. Now what I wanna do is just slightly expand this range a little bit. And I'm gonna go something about like that. And the beautiful, uh, powerful thing about this tool is down here we have HSL. So I've basically now got the ability to shift the hue, adjust the saturation level, and increase or decrease the luminance of just that color. So it's a very specific color range. And so let's say I want to go a bit more rich of a blue color and a bit more saturated blue color. And I'm going fairly extreme just to make it obvious. And let's say I want to darken that blue color. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off these glasses and return us back to our original color photo and and it may not look like a huge change it's actually fairly subtle despite some fairly large moves here but it's because that's contained in that very specific color range so if i turn this tool off there it is before and turn it back on there it is now richer blue darker blue a bit more saturated blue so that's the power of this edit color feature i'm pretty excited about it because if you've been here before you know i love to edit color and having control over the color is absolutely important to me and i love that so now that I've done that, I wanna show you the match color feature. Again, super cool and super fun. Also here in the filter menu, so add filter and match color. Now it says here, match the color and tone from a reference photo. It's great for a movie look, but it's also great for using on your own photos or any other photos that you may find online to use as a reference photo. In fact, there's another product, Luminar, that I use quite a bit, and they came out with a similar feature, and I made a color reference pack that's available on my website. I'll put a link down below. It works just fine in on one because all you're doing is loading your own reference photos. So you can go in here, and I've got this one that I loaded. You can just click Load File to load your own. But I loaded this photo here, which you get this nice preview of the photo once you click it. It was this beautiful, colorful beach scene, and it's been applied to this photo automatically. So now I've converted the original color look to this reference photo. And you also notice when you turn this off, you see how it makes it kind of gray. Well, not kind of, it does make it gray in your reference photo, showing that you, uh, you're not using those colors in the image that you're currently editing. Well, the other nice thing about it is, of course, I can adjust the color, luminosity, contrast, and saturation. So what I wanna do here is take this color down a little bit, and that luminosity down, but maybe increase the contrast a little bit. 
And so that's basically created a little bit more subtle look because as you saw, that color, uh, as much as I like those colors, it's got that nice kind of magenta pink going on. And I like applying that to kind of a twilight blue hour uh, city shot where you have some of those tones, the blues and the pinks and the reds and the oranges from the streetlights. Uh, but I didn't want all of that look. So match color allowed me to really quickly go from that to that just by adding that reference photo and moving a few sliders. And so that's the power of this tool. And you can use any kind of reference photo. You can take a screenshot of something from a movie poster online. Maybe there's another photographer that you follow whose work you like, whatever. It's, uh, it's flexible and powerful, but it gives you a lot of great control over color and matching colors from one image to the next. I think it's a lot of fun and uh, I think you'll enjoy it as well. And now that I've done that, I want to demonstrate depth mask, which may be my favorite thing. You can see Brilliance AI has already been used here. That's because I used it in develop and made some minor adjustments. But I'm going to add a new adjustment here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on masking. That opens up my masking menu. And depth mask, as the name implies, is a mask that's built automatically based on the depth of the photo. So it recognizes stuff that's close. Um, and it creates a mask for that and it fades it pretty nicely into the photo. All you do is there's this icon right here, right next to luminosity mask, which is one of my favorites, but depth mask is quickly becoming another favorite. So just click that and it will automatically create a mask. Now you'll see that things went darker and that's because this exposure dropped automatically to negative one. But what I want to do is actually refine that mask. So I like to click the little uh, goggles here where it says view mask. And there you go. You can see the stuff that's brighter white has more of the mask. The lighter gray has less mask and the black has no mask. So it's representing the depth in the photo. Just one of the reasons I use this photo because those buildings are obviously closer and the mountains and the sky are obviously further away. You'll notice that's brighter white. That's a little bit brighter white. And that down there is brighter white. If I turn this off again, you will look, that's really close. That's pretty close. That's really close. And so it's done a really good job of representing the depth of the photo. But let's say I want to make an adjustment to that because I do. I like to adjust my mass and kind of refine my control over what the edit is going to be, be like in my image. This is where I come in and I use levels. It's a great, great tool uh, or slider uh, here in the masking menu. I use it on pretty much every mask, but it gives you the ability to really tighten up that mask and control things. And so I might want to adjust these highlights a little bit, create a little bit more uh, intensity, a little bit more uh, of the mask in the stuff that's in the foreground, and maybe refine some of these mid-range uh, parts as well. Maybe something about like that. I'm a little bit more isolating those things in the front and kind of fading it into the back. So now that I've done that, I'm going to come over here and actually what I want to do is actually slightly increase the exposure. Uh, instead of that negative one that is defaulting to, I'm going to go like maybe a quarter or so of a stop higher just to make it a little bit brighter because it's closer. So to me, it seems like it should be a little bit brighter. Let me uh, hide the masking menu. I'm also going to add a little bit of warmth to it. So just a, a couple of little bits on the slider, a five, maybe a little bit of tint, just a little bit there. And let me go into structure and maybe add a little bit of structure as well, just to give it a little bit of extra crunch. And it's pretty minor, but again, it's a mask that fades from the foreground to the background. That's the beauty of a depth mask. You would expect to see uh, a little sharper, a little bit better view of things that are closer versus things that are further away. And that's what the depth mask accomplishes for you. So before, there it is. And after, there it is. So a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer, a little bit more structure. And that's the beauty of having a depth mask because, again, it recognizes the depth in the scene. It's automatic and it's going to allow me to control my images. And that's what masking is all about. It's one of the reasons I like On One so much because their masking is so good and so you have so much control over the image. So let me show you before and after this entire photo. Again, some of which I did before the video started with Brilliance AI and Develop. But then I came in with effects with edit color and match color and then a local adjustment with the depth mask. But I was able to pretty quickly go from that photo to that photo. Now, I'm probably not done editing. I'd probably go add some more stuff. But this was really just a demo of those three key features that I think I'm going to use the most in this new version of On One. There's a lot of stuff to explore here. I will be back with more videos soon, but I wanted to give you kind of a preview of what's here. I'll show you an example of how I'm using that. And like I said, I'll come back and dive into some of these tools in more depth in future videos. If you have specific questions, leave them down below. I'll be back soon, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves and I'll be back soon. You guys take care. Until next time, adios.